Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Lascala, the art teacher. As you know, I'm the art teacher here in Willingboro's ECDC schools. Thank you for joining me on this asynchronous learning day. That means I wasn't able to get a connection or you weren't able to log in at the right time, which is okay, these things, they do happen. But that means uh, you can now see me here on YouTube, on this platform right now. You could always fast forward, rewind, or pause anytime you want to. We're going to have five, uh, two five-minute screen breaks, and you can fast forward through them if you'd like to. I'm going to be reading two books, and we're going to be doing two drawing projects this, this time. Why two books? Because we're celebrating um, Read Across America week, okay? So I'm going to be reading two Dr. Zeus-styled books, and uh, we're going to kind of draw our own thing. Uh, step by step uh, once we come up with a good idea or two. We may have to use the idea box. Uh, we'll see though. All right. So the first thing you need to do is know your hand signals before I read the book because I'm going to ask a few questions afterwards. So shake those thumbs out and give me a thumbs up. All right. That means yes or you can nod your head up and down. Shake those thumbs and show me a thumbs down. That's going to mean no. Or you can go like this with your head. No. Shake those thumbs. Give me a side thumb. That's going to mean maybe or I don't know. That'll work too. Let me see. You. Shake those thumbs. and Give me a thumbs down. Double thumb. Double thumbs down. Very cool. That's going to mean absolutely not. What are you talking about, Mr. Lascala? Shake those thumbs and double thumbs up. Oh, I like how you did the thumb, double thumbs up with me like that. Very cool. That's going to mean absolutely yes, 110%. All right. So we're going to start by reading the first book. The first book is called Bears on Wheels. Remember to stay on mute, uh, especially since we're asynchronous. <laughs> uh, chat will be reserved for adults that need help. But in this case, uh, you could just email me at my email address. You'll see that in a little bit uh, later in the program. Bears on Wheels, a bright and early counting book. Excellent. This is by Stan and Jen Berenstain. Okay. Very cool. Bears on Wheels. Bears on Wheels by the famous Stan and Jan Berenstain. It's a bright and early book from Random House, and it has our cat in the hat sign of approval. One bear, one wheel. One bear on a wheel. Two bears on one wheel. Three on one. Four on one. Four bears on one wheel. One bear on two wheels. Four on two. One on one again. One on one. Three on three. I like how they're, they're, they're singing and throwing flowers as they ride. None on four. That also means four on none. One on one again. Hmm. Five on one. Five 
Five bears on one. Five bears on none. Ten on one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One bear on five wheels. One on five. Ten on one. Ten on ten. Twenty one on none. Let's count them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And then one on one again. The end. Round of applause. Let's pretend we're on a bicycle. Bicycle means two wheels. Very nice. So we're going to uh, uh, come back from break and uh, we're going to design a vehicle first. Did you like that book? Yes, maybe. Very nice. What was your favorite number of wheels? Three? I, mine, mine was one. Uh, because we start with one wheel, so I really like one. Uh, the two wheels, that makes sense. When I was younger, I had two wheels on a bicycle. That's why it's called a bicycle, two wheels. I never had a unicycle. That's one wheel. Uh, tricycle. Has anyone ever had uh, ever ridden on a tricycle? That's three wheels. Sometimes they call it a big wheel. Very nice. All right, so... I'm going to take our first five minute screen break right now. I want you to draw something with wheels. It could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wheels. Up to you. Your choice, your artwork. When I come back, I'd like you to uh, show it to me, and we are going to design our very own wheeled uh, vehicle. Um, and we're going to try to see how many uh, wheels we can put on this vehicle. Or we're going to have to use the idea box to tell us how many. I'll see you shortly. Screen break means get up and away from the computer and draw using a pencil um, on a piece of paper. Notebook paper is fine for this. I'll see you soon. Don't leave the room without telling an adult.
Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a nice short break. We'll be doing another one in a little bit. But first, I want you to show me your vehicle and how many wheels it has. Very cool. Very nice. We're going to draw one on the back of that paper, if you can, flip it over. And we're going to draw our very own vehicle, um, whether it's a bike or a car or whatever. We'll see what it turns out to be because we're going to have to use the idea box. All right. So let's see. First, now there's a bunch of different numbers on here, and there's also a few other items on, on each of them. And we're going to first pull for the number of wheels. Twelve. All right. So we're going to have 12 wheels. Very cool. And let's see what kind of a vehicle it could be. Remember, there's a lot of different vehicles I put in this box. Um, let's see which one we pull out. Okay. Motorcycle. A 12-wheeled motorcycle. Let's do this. Now, if you don't want to draw it like I'm drawing it, that's okay. This is your art. This is uh, your project. We're in art room. We're in the art class. Feel free to create whatever you'd like at the moment, however you'd like to do it. Remember, as long as you're trying to do something, you're doing the right thing. If you're sitting there doing nothing, try to do something creative. Okay. I do understand that sometimes we don't have the proper materials, uh, like uh, even a pencil sometimes. So you can kind of, you know, uh, pick up later when you finally get uh, access to a pencil and paper. And then you can uh, you can draw a, uh, a vehicle with a lot of wheels. All right. Um, I'm going to start uh, by suggesting you use your pencil. Why the pencil? That's why. You have an eraser. All right, you're able to erase any lines before you uh, you uh, use a, a darker crayon to outline. Okay, now you hold your pencil like this with three fingers. Burr, burr, burr. Oh, I'm going to be using my crayon. The problem with the crayon is we are not able to erase. So 
If you want to use a crayon, that's okay. Remember, I do not suggest using markers, especially since we use the back side of the paper a lot. Do not use dry erase markers um, unless an adult is ready to take a picture when you're when you're done. Uh, don't use uh, any kind of marker unless an adult is next to you at all. Um, it can get messy. Not only can you get it on your on your skin, but you can get it on your clothes too. So. Um, Please be very, very careful and have an adult sit next to you uh, when and if you have to use a marker. Use color. I would rather you even used a, uh, a ballpoint pen. All right. That being said, let's move right along to our 12-wheeled motorcycle. All right. I'm going to start by holding my paper this way. How am I holding it? Landscape. You said landscape, give me a thumbs up. If you said horizontal, give me a double thumbs up. Very good. Those are both correct answers. Eventually, you're going to need to know this as horizontal. So that's one of my, uh, my things, uh, my initiatives for this year, is that we know the difference between vertical and horizontal. All right. It used to be, it used to be scissors uh, cutting, but... Um, we're not going to be doing a lot of cutting this year. Uh, we're not going to be using a lot of glue, and we're not going to be using markers if we don't have to. Uh, I do want to touch on those, and in previous videos I have, but we're going to touch on those again at the end of the year. Uh, but we are most likely not going to actually uh, use it while we are remote learning. 12 wheels are going to start with 12 circles on the ground. Okay, That's how I'm going to make my motorcycle. Now, I'm going to start with small circles that are going to be more like U's, maybe even a closed U. It's going to look like this kind of a shape. There we go. Like that. So this way I could put spokes on it. You'll see what I'm, not spokes, but a fork around it. I'll explain in a minute. Let's first draw those small ones that could be different sizes too. So I'm going to draw one like this. <laughs> now I didn't close them because we're gonna put a motorcycle on top of this somehow but I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve twelve small tiny um, circles for my motorcycle and now what I'm gonna draw is the fork part fork parts kind of like a rectangle that sticks out from these okay it's going to go from the middle of our circle and out and up. Mine's going to be kind of like this kind of a shape. Let me see if I can get it right. It's so hard, this computer. There we go. See how it's kind of like an oval? That's the shape that I'm going to have coming out. And I'm going to have them pointing towards this area right here. I'm going to draw um, a little line. Okay, that's going to be the area we're going to try to draw towards for our motorcycle. So it's definitely going to look like a Dr. Seuss motorcycle uh, or a Bernstein Bear style Dr. Seuss um, motorcycle because it's going to have these crazy forks all going into one big engine probably uh, with one, one or two riders on it with a helmet. Remember, always wear your helmet. Safety first. I actually do not suggest using a motorcycle at all in life. But after you're 18, it's your choice. And believe it or not, a little earlier than that, it's up to your parents. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Something like that. And then I can put little spokes around it. I can even kind of do that to make kind of like a wheel.
<laughs> All right. When you're using a pencil, it's a lot easier because you have a smaller area uh, to work with. I'm just going to be doing a whole lot of this. Now, if you have, um, if your hand is getting tired at all whatsoever, you can do your hand exercises. All right. Your finger exercises are going to go like this. You can do them along with me. Okay. You put your hands out. Touch your thumb to your pointer. Then your thumb to your tall finger. Then your thumb to the ring finger, and then the thumb to the little finger. Okay, shake, roll that thumb forwards and then backwards. Can't tell a difference, can you? Then you can roll your wrist forwards and then wrist backwards. Scrunch your fingers like this. Very nice. You can even roll them all again. Very good. And my favorite part, shake it all out. And now you can count to 15 with me. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. All right, our fingers should be ready to continue forth. All right, so I don't even have room for my engine, so I'm going to put my engine up here on the back. It's going to be like a rectangle sticking out. I'm going to have it off to the side, so we're going to have our engine look like this. I'm going to put a bunch of circles up here. And we're going to put some pipes and tubes in there. We have our camshaft. We have our pistons. We, ha we even have an air filter. Might as well. We'll have a big blower on the top of it. All right. So there it is. We're going to make this a cushion. Our awesome motorcycle and there we have our our motorcycle we'll put the road in behind it here's our horizon line we can put buildings in like this make it look like it's in a city there we go and there's our awesome motorbike. Uh, we don't even have a driver. That's okay. We're going to put these on here on our handlebars or our brakes. We're going to need some kind of cool little place for our foot. Kickstand. I don't know if we need a kickstand if we have that many wheels. All right. And there we have our awesome 12-wheeled motorcycle feel free to color this in i'm going to read another book when we come back and then we're going to draw a picture of that a 
I'll see you in about five minutes. Get away from the technology for a little bit. Now's a great opportunity to use the bathroom or even have a snack, just as long as you tell or ask an adult first. All right, welcome back, everybody. 
hope you had a chance to color in your 12-wheeled motorcycle. Now we're going to be drawing, well, we're not going to be drawing anything yet. We're going to be reading a book, since it's Read Across America Week. This is called Park, a Shark. This is all about sharks by Bonnie Worth and illustrated by Aristides Ruiz and Joe Mateu. Park, a shark. It's a very informational book, so you can sit back and relax, and uh, we'll go on an adventure, and we'll learn a lot about sharks. I'm the cat in the hat, and for more than a lark, would you care to go to a brand new kind of park? It's a super shark tank that is like a small sea. We will visit with sharks. Do you dare come with me? Sharks seem very scary to us, it's true, but most sharks are really no danger to you. People fear sharks, and that's mostly because of films that star sharks with big snapping jaws. But give sharks a chance, and I think you will find that they will dazzle your eyes and broaden your mind. See this wonderful boat bobbing here on the water? It's my super stupendous ship-shaped shark spotter. For tracking down sharks is the best, don't you know? So hop on a board and shark spotting will go. Over 400 species swim the seas today. Let's visit with them, uh, some of them. Anchors away. 400. Like a brave knight, thick suits of mail. Thick suit of A shark skin protects it almost without fail. Stroke the skin, head to tail, it's as smooth, you will see. Stroke the skin, tail to head, it's as rough as can be. That's because it has denticles, hard toothy stuff, that lies flat for swimming, but makes the skin tough. A whale skin gets dirty and gunky, you see, but a shark skin stays clean and is nearly gunk-free. It's tough and it's rough. And it's sleek and it's clean. Shark skin is unlike anything you've ever seen. These fake shark skin suits help swimmers to swim. And go uh, human skin grafts are grown from shark skin. And gunk falls right off of the shark spotter, uh, spotter side because of a paint that is rough like shark hide. Looking for shark teeth? There are plenty. You know why? Most sharks have a nearly unending supply. From a jaw made of bone, your human teeth grow. Shark teeth grow from gums in row after row. When a tooth becomes loose or else gets a bad crack, it will soon be replaced by a tooth in the back. What type of food will your average shark choose? Most sharks hunt for meat when they go out to cruise. Great White's teeth are sharp for tearing and munching horn, sh horn shark's teeth are flat for crushing and crunching. Whale shark. The shark you see here might fill you with awe, but, in, but the tiniest teeth will fill its giant maw. It's the largest shark that you'll ever meet. Well, you, we've measured it and it's 44 feet. What is our giant friend's favorite dish? Plants and animals called plankton and we tiny fish. These gill rakers here act just like a sieve. They sift out the food the whale sharks need to live. When a shark swims along, its mouth opens wide. Water that comes in goes out gills on the side. Its tail beats the water and swinging side to side. See how smoothly this leopard shark here seems to glide? Pectoral fins lift, I have been thinking, like two airplane wings to keep sharks from sinking. Dorsal fins on the top stand up and are ready to keep sharks upright, swimming even and steady. With its wide pectorals, the angle shark lies flat and as still as a rug. Will you just look at that? It's so still that you might think that it's just napping. Then suddenly look, its strong jaws are snapping.
The shark comes equipped with a keen inner ear that senses whatever its prey might be near, and the nostrils like holes that sit under its snout sniff out any prey that is lurking about. The name that we give these two holes is Nairs. It's helpful to know that the world rhymes with fairies. Nairies. Okay, I called it Nairs. It's called Nairies, and I wouldn't have known that had I not read. Nurse sharks have whiskers, and what are they for? These whiskers, called barbels, sweep the seafloor. These whiskey gizmos do not go to waste. The shark uses them to feel and to taste. There's a line of port pores along a shark's side. The pores are like sensors set into the shark's hides. They pick up vibrations from prey all around, cluing sharks as to where their prey can be found. Most well, sharks have a rule, have quite keen eyesight. Their eyes can see well in both dim and bright light. The puffador shark, shy shark's long tail whips around and helps hide it from predators. Shark ex experts have found. The hammerhead shark's range of sight overlaps, giving it much better vision, perhaps. But who needs sharp eyes way down deep in the murk where this rare goblin shark's nose does all of the work? Some sharks are hatched out of eggs in a case that is hidden by mom in a very safe place. Some shark eggs hatch inside mom and then thrive on egg yolk till they're big enough to survive. Lemon sharks, like us, as I have just read, grow in their mom's bodies where they're safe and fed. This pup is born live, rests a bit, and then hark, off it goes on its own. That's the life of a shark. Two things have come up with this most clever verse. An empty egg case is called a mermaid's purse. Tagging is how we have learned very much about many sharks' habits and movements and such. Lemon sharks get tagged and do not seem to mind. Other sharks mind it plenty, I think you will find. Tags offer data, like this bit, for instance. A blue shark can swim a very long distance. In 16 months' time from New York, it will swim 4,000 miles to far out Brazil. The things are now holding a sharp spotter contest to reward each shark here for what it does the best. The whale shark is biggest, we've said this before, the smallest dwarf lantern shark is about 8 inches, no more. The fastest is Mako, it is a uh, speed whiz. The wobble gong might be the slowest there is. What sort of shark is that I spot? It looks like a thresher shark here, does it not? It has a long tail. See how that tail switches to round up its dinner, a mouthful of fishes. The tiger shark isn't fussy. It'll eat anything, a clock or a stool or a rusty bed spring. The cookie cutter shark with its big teeth rips, neat perfect circles sucked free with its lips. The spiny dogfish, just call him granddad, lives as long as some humans. That's some life he's had. The Megamouth attacks prey, it glows in the dark. Light works as a lure for this deep water shark. These white tipped reef sharks sometimes swim in packs and hunt as a team for their favorite snacks. The spinner shark here confesses its prey by spinning its body in a dizzying way. The great white looks deadly upon close inspection but may be in danger without our protection. Our visit is over, but hold on, not quite. Let's spend some more time with the deadly Great White. The Great White is simply a hunting machine. Watch it at work and you will see what I mean. Dark on its top side and light below, it can sneak up no matter what the angle, you know? Its jaws jut out far, the better to grip. Its teeth are made so as to bite and to rip. 
Its big head shakes hard to loosen and snatch. Its eyes roll far back, avoiding a scratch. If you swim where it's safe, sharks will leave you be. You will stay safe as on land, you will see. Around this hard fact, I will not haul or hem. Sharks should fear us no more than we do them. Sharks are in danger, this I will repeat. People hunt them down for sport and for meat, for oil and for their remarkable skins, and let's not forget for their dorsal fins. People are not the shark's natural prey, but too many people think it's that way. They want to get sharks before sharks get us. Let's speak for the sharks and stir up a fuss. Do you do you do your bit to help? Here's what you might say. To shark fin soup supper, just say yuck, no way. Do not go shark fishing just for a lark. Let's let the sharks be. Yes, let's save the sharks. The end. All right, let's clap. And now let's do our shark bite. Very good. We're going to quickly draw a, um, a shark. Now, what was your favorite shark? What one can you remember? Very nice. Cool. We are going to draw... One of these. I just picked a page. Let's draw this one up here. This is the tiger shark. It's the least fussy eater. It'll eat anything. All right, so we're going to try to draw that one. So we're going to use a pencil. I'm going to use my crayon. I'm going to get my paper, the back side of my motorcycle. I'm going to hold my paper this direction. What side, which way am I holding it? Landscape. If you said landscape, again, give me that thumbs up. And if you said horizontal, give me the double thumbs up. All right. So we're going to try to draw that one right over here. So I'm going to use my crayon, and I'm going to use it lightly to start showing you how it looks. First, we're going to need like a frown kind of a look right now. It'll look like this. Very lightly if you're going to use a crayon. All right. Now I'm going to go like this. Then this. Notice I'm using my crayon lightly again, so I can color in the top side. Remember, the top side is a little darker than the light, the bottom, which is lighter. And I just drew a bunch of stripes for my tiger shark.
And there we have it. I have the eye closed. And this is eating a ribbon because he eats anything. I'm not actually going to have mine eat anything. You can sign your name at the bottom and send it to my email address. You can color it in. You can even color the water in. You can color it green like in the book. Or you can color it blue. Or any colors that you have available. I hope you had fun today. Thanks for joining us. Adults, thank you for your help. I appreciate it. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.